We have uh, two candidates for one seat on the township uh, committee. We have Tara Krupas and we have Jody Rosenberg. Okay. What I'm going to do now is to review the rules of the board. And the candidates are familiar with this, but I'll they'll refresh it and you'll, you'll learn what the rules are as well. Um, the time, this is a timed event, and the time is going to be uh, strictly enforced for both fairness and brevity and make sure we complete our program on time. I will be in charge of determining which candidate speaks in which order, and I'll endeavor to make the selection uh, random and fair. Uh, audience members will be uh, permitted to ask questions in the third part of the debate, and that's a very important part of this uh, forum. We are hoping that we're going to have a very good debate tonight, and we will begin with the uh, opening remarks, which are five minutes, and I'll ask Tara Krupas uh, to begin. Thank you. So hi, I'm Tara Krupas, and I'm running for Township Committee. Thank you all for coming out to this conversation tonight. I grew up locally, not in Milburn, but in Livingston. I came to Milburn by choice to open my business here five years ago. When my business was thriving, I moved to town with my daughter, who attends Milburn High School. Before that, I graduated from Columbia University, and I worked in the corporate world, which didn't resonate for me. My first entrepreneurial experience was opening up a Montessori preschool where I could work and spend time with my young daughter. My passion led me to teach yoga, to open Green Nectar Juicery, and to move to Milburn. You need three things to have a successful business, a successful project, or a successful town. You need good planning, good budgeting, and good customer service. It's obvious that all three are lacking in the way the township committee runs the town. This is not a one-issue election, but let's be honest. Complete Streets has had a lasting negative impact on our town. So I would like to use it as an example of my three points. Planning, budgeting, and customer service. Why has Complete Streets been such a disappointment? Number one, poor planning. The design was not well thought out, and so it has increased traffic and frustration and discourages shoppers and diners from coming downtown. Worse, it has increased cut-through traffic in adjacent residential neighborhoods and increase the response time of emergency vehicles that can't get through the downtown. These are safety issues, and that is poor planning. Number two, poor budgeting. The money that was originally borrowed for all three phases has nearly all been used up by phase one. This means there is poor fiscal oversight by the people who should be managing our tax dollars. As an example, my opponent voted in favor of the construction that narrowed Milburn Avenue to one lane in front of Wells Fargo without even having an estimate from the construction company. That is poor budgeting. Number three, poor customer service. When the Complete Streets project was undertaken, there was virtually no communication with the merchants. I know this from firsthand experience. What may even be worse is that the township committee on which my opponent sits is resolutely unwilling to listen to residents and taxpayers. As an example, when my opponent and others on the township committee voted to push through the street narrowing in front of Wells Fargo without having an estimate, the vote was taken when dozens of residents came to the special meeting called during the workday in order to voice opposition. There was literally dozens of people shouting for the committee to listen to them, and the committee would not. That is poor customer service. There are many other issues in the town. High property taxes, flooding, affordable housing, appropriate development, 24-hour businesses, and more. And I'm happy to be here to discuss them tonight. If you take nothing else away from tonight, I hope you will remember this about me. My focus will be using my business experience to bring a positive change through good planning, good budgeting, and good customer service. Thank you for coming tonight to listen, and I look forward to a positive dialogue so we can move Milburn forward for a vibrant, diverse, and responsive community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jody Rosenberg, Deputy Mayor of Milburn. 
I'd like to thank the Short Hills Association for hosting this event. And I'd like to recognize the committee members in the room from our township committee, committee woman Aglo, committee woman Lieberberg, and former committee woman McNett, and I don't know if I see any others. I've lived in the township as a homeowner for over 20 years. I live here with my husband Daniel, my children Brandon, who's 20, my son Jordan, who's 17, and my daughter Sydney, who's 14. My children are all products of the Milburn school system. I'm an attorney, and I have a practice in Milburn on Main Street. I focus my practice on family law, divorce mediation, and real estate. As a mediator, I understand how to bring stakeholders together and handle their important issues. I've been recognized by my peers as a super lawyer for excellence in practice. I was honored with an appointment by the New Jersey Supreme Court as the secretary for the District 5A Fee Arbitration Committee. I've co-authored two books on women in the law. I also serve as the Essex County Trustee to the State Bar Association, of which I'm on the Board of Trustees. <coughs> I start most of my days at YB Fitness talking to a lot of you about issues in the town. I've also volunteered in the schools, having served as the producer of the Deerfield Play for six years, having served as a chain mom in Little League on the Hawks chain, and in township-related commissions. Prior to running for this position in 2015, I took the time to get an understanding of how the township operates before seeking office. I was honored with appointments by prior township committees. I was on the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee and the Community Service Award Committee. I was tapped to run for election in 2015 because I was the leader of the well-known Work Mom Group, which is now boasts over 1,900 members. While I was helping our members connect with resources during Hurricane Sandy, people had told me back then they wanted for me, me to run for office, and I think I got a few write-in votes. In fact, once elected in 2015, I was influential in getting our town to communicate better with its residents by encouraging a Facebook group, which we now have up and running. As the current liaison to the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, I spent my last meeting working with the seniors and showing how to use our app so they can learn about township events. In addition to promoting communication and transparency, during my tenure on the Township Committee, I served on the board of the Mountain Valley Emergency Communications Board, <coughs> which is our joint 911 dispatch center with Summit and New Providence, the Corner of Archer and Arboretum, the Recreation Commission, the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, and the Downtown Milburn Development Alliance, DMDA. As such, I've, I've participated in the search for new playing fields, I've worked on keeping our senior citizens engaged in the community, and I've shepherded the DMDA through a change in leadership and on the path to better compliance with its mission. I've worked with representatives of our township schools and our police department to ensure safe routes to school, including applying for available grants and obtaining a lower speed limit near the Wyoming school. I was instrumental in hiring the judge, municipal prosecutor, and public defender, and ensuring that our municipal court runs smoothly. In addition to the legislative role, our township committee members also serve on the front lines as customer service representatives to our residents. We strive to be responsive and respectful to our constituents' concerns. We also serve as the face of the township with celebrations. As deputy mayor, I am ordained to perform weddings, and I've performed over 20 wedding ceremonies in the township in the past two years. I've also the honor of participating in Eagle Scout Advancement Ceremony and recognizing some of our township's youth as they advance to this great honor. Probably my best moment serving as deputy mayor was when I was able to dedicate the new Giro Park batting cages in honor of Stephen Carp, son of longtime residents, Robin and Jeff Carp. Seeing the whole baseball community come together was the des best display of community support that I've seen in my residency in Melbourne Township for more than two decades. I submit that my experience in seniority is beneficial to the residents I serve, and there's a lot more work I want to accomplish. If elected, I will do everything I can to ensure the appropriate density in the proposed building by the Short Hills train station. I will monitor the spending of legal fees by our lawyers and outside consultants. I will continue to explore opportunities for shared services with other municipalities. Most important, I consider myself a balanced voice of reason. I would like to restore decorum and respect on our township committee so that we can move forward with planning for our township's future. Thank you. program, I'm going to ask you to hold your applause and uh, uh, to the end of the program. The first of our preset questions I'm going to address to, uh, to Jody Rosenberg, and it's a multi-part question. Do you support the Complete Streets project going forward? Do you view Phase 1 as a success or failure? 
What evidence do you have to support your position? What would you change? Be specific and state what the township should be willing to spend to accomplish what you believe should be done. That's three minutes. Yes, yes, and plenty of evidence. Give you a little background on complete streets. This was the public policy in Essex County when a resolution was adopted by the Essex County Board of Freeholders sponsored by Freeholder Brendan Gill in early 2012. Complete Streets Initiative, which addresses downtown pedestrian safety, traffic flow, intersection congestion, and traffic calming is not unique to Milburn. In fact, there's currently about 147 municipalities in New Jersey with Complete Streets policies, including Esbury Park, Berkeley Heights, Chatham, Cranford, Hoboken, Madison, Maplewood, Princeton, and Red Bank, to name a few. If you look at meetings of Township Prior Minutes, this was discussed as early as 2013. This was not sprung upon the residents. Further, with a lot of pedestrian and motor vehicle accidents in the township and aging infrastructure, my predecessors wisely agreed to follow the initiative pronounced by our county freeholders, just as neighboring municipalities in our county have, including Bloomfield, Caldwell, Glen Ridge, Livingston, Maplewood, and Montclair. Yes, I consider phase one to be successful, although there are certain areas that need improvement. Don't just listen to me, listen to the facts. We were given an award by the State of New Jersey Department of Transportation Complete Street Summit Task Force for Complete Streets Excellence in 2017. We were given an award in 2018 as the Great Place designee for Milburn Avenue and Main Street by the New Jersey Chapter of American Planning. As of September 2018, accidents are down in Milburn. There's a big decrease in crashes. On Milburn and Main Street Corner, we went from 32 accidents in 2014 to 13 in 2018. I received this data from the Milburn Police Department. On Essex and Main Street, we went from 32 accidents in 2014 to three accidents to date in 2018. Pedestrian accidents in the township went from 16 in 2016 to seven to date. And significantly, none of the pedestrian accidents were at either of the two corners I just mentioned, Milburn and Maine, or Essex and Maine. People are still getting through town. In a speed study by the police, 85% of the people going from Spring Street to Mil up Milburn Avenue were still going at an average of 27 miles an hour. So cars are going above the speed limit 85% of the time after construction. Parking transactions show that people are using the town. People are parking. Although our 23 flexible parking spots are not popular, data collected from our parking app and the meters show that people are parking and downtown parking revenue has steadily <coughs> increased despite construction. That is not to say the chosen design is perfect. It has flaws, but you cannot ignore that it has accomplished the task of reducing pedestrian accidents. I believe the impasse is hurting us more than what has been put in place. It is time to compromise and move forward. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, because the question is a, a multi-part, I'm going to repeat it for the benefit of the audience. Uh, the question is, uh, Tara, do you support the Complete Streets project going forward? Do you view Phase 1 as a success or a failure? What evidence do you have to support your position? What would you change? Be specific and state what the township should be willing to spend to accomplish what you believe should be done. Three minutes. Thank you. We need to push pause on the Complete Streets program until we have a full, thorough public accounting of what has been spent and a full and thorough assessment of how the project has impacted the downtown and has changed traffic patterns throughout our town. There are positive elements of our Complete Streets project, but I think we need to be honest about the negative impacts as well. One of the biggest issues has been the process and implementation that, that led us to this point. The project was pushed forward without enough public input and adequate study to see how it would impact our downtown and our traffic flow. The Township Committee has already spent millions of dollars on complete streets, <coughs> so we need to be very careful with how we proceed from here. The first step is pushing pause. No more spending, no more construction until we can fully assess what has been done and what types of targeted fixes can be made to the elements such as flex parking. The second issue we need to have is 
involving the residents and the business owners. The sole focus, which will be soliciting input from the public and other businesses in town to assess which issues are most disruptive. The bottom line is we can't just throw money at continuing the project without, without better information and a better process. Unfortunately, that seems to be the approach we've seen from some members of the Township, the township Committee to date. So let's get organized and be more strategic. Thank you. Uh, Jody, do you have any comment that you'd want to uh, make on Tara's answer in your hands? If you do, one minute to do so. Sure. So, the project was a comprehensive plan. It wasn't just one phase. And it's unfinished. And it was meant to be working as a comprehensive plan. For example, east side of Milburn Avenue and Essex Street, where pedestrians are trying to go to the train. We still have to improve pedestrian safety there and our commuters walking to the train station. People are still going too quickly on Essex Street. If we were to finish the project and move forward, we would be able to have a comprehensive flow in town. So that is one of the factors why going forward is important. As far as merchants or business owners not knowing about the project. There was a subcommittee that included the business administrator, fire, <coughs> police, township building and engineer, two township committee members, and the professionals hired. They put on public sessions. If certain merchants chose not to go to them until after construction started, I'm not sure why they would suggest that at this point they didn't know about it. But there was notice, this has been on our, our Radar since 2012. All right, thank you. Tara, do you have any response to that comment? I do. We are over budget on this project. And I think that before we continue to move forward in any possible way, we need to look at what has been done and we need to make sure that we stay to a budget and that we use our tax, tax dollars responsibly. Thank you. Thank you. Our second question is first going to be directed to Tara. The question is this. Milburn's published affordable housing obligation is approximately 1,000 units. Do you favor implementing the transit village model at the Short Hills and Milburn train stations? What is your vision of what are your tools, the tools you would employ, to integrate affordable housing into the community to meet our affordable housing obligation? Affordable housing is another area where a more proactive approach to planning would have worked better. All New Jersey communities have affordable obligations, housing obligations. Some communities have chosen to work to satisfy, satisfy those obligations on their terms, and others have tried to kick the can down the road. Right now we're in a builder's remedy lawsuit with a developer for the Chatham Road development. Once you end up in a builder's remedy lawsuit, you lose a lot of latitude. The builders and the courts can dictate more, taking decisions largely out of the hands of our community. So I favor taking a comprehensive look at the obligations and how we can take control of the decision-making process. Creating one and two bedroom housing around our train stations where young professionals and seniors can move in is a good thing. But we need to be sensitive to the residents in the surrounding neighborhoods about design, lighting, and traffic. That's why we need to take as much control as possible of the process. Any new units should fit with the character of the surrounding areas to the greatest extent possible. We need to act, however, we need to start the process of hearing residents' concerns and develop a plan to move forward. Finally, we should have a committee dedicated to studying the implementation <coughs> of the transit village model. If we do it, we need to do it right. There is grant funding available to designated transit villages. In general, we need to do a better <coughs> job at capturing grant dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Before I ask uh, Jody to respond to this question once again, for the benefit of the audience, I'm going to read it. Milburn's published affordable housing obligation is approximately 1,000 units. Do you favor implementing the transit village model at the Short Hills and Milburn train stations? 
What is your vision and what tools would you employ to integrate affordable housing into the community to meet our affordable housing obligation? Thank you. So transit-oriented development is what is mixed-use residential and commercial development designed to take advantage of public transportation access. We have two train stations. It's an important component of smart growth because it allows people to live, work, and play without having a car, which is probably the future. Not only is it good for millennials, but it's good for seniors so they can age in place. As a senior citizen liaison, I sometimes ask our seniors, why, are you, you know, why do you stay here? Why do you, why do you stay in town? But they, because we have great services, healthy bones classes, things like that. We want to be able to keep our seniors here, and we want to be able to attract millennials. However, I do not favor the transit-oriented orient, uh, development by the Short Hills train station, <coughs> and I voted against the project because I was listening to residents' concerns. Residents who brought us pictures of balloons to show us how high the project would be <coughs> that was proposed by the developer. Residents that pointed out to us that the developer had already prematurely put on their website what they were building when they had not really been given approvals. So because of that, we're now in litigation and we're in mediation. And I can't comment on the status of it, but what I can tell you is if re-elected, I will be doing everything I can to make sure that project is least dense as possible. As far as fair share housing, I'd say that a thousand is a false number. We applied for a declaratory judgment to get a vacant land number, and right now it's in the court's hands, and we expect that we will get a number that will be substantially less. If we do have transit-oriented development, Milburn Corridor would be much better by the train station, by Annie Says, by uh, the Commons. The master plan is required to be renewed every 10 years, and our planning board has been diligently working on a master plan, which looks at where we should be focusing on development. And of course, because we all have a fair share obligation, 20% of any new development should be set aside for fair share housing. But just because an area is deemed accessible as an area for high density housing, doesn't mean it'll be developed. I'll conclude by saying, I've listened to the residents. I'll continue to listen to the residents for as long as I can represent them. Thank you. Tara, do you have any comment on Jody's answer? I have no comment. Okay. And we're going to move on to the uh, third question, and this is going to be addressed mm -hmm. to Jody. It is likely, many people feel, that marijuana will be legal in the state of New Jersey. Would you support an ordinance to forbid the sale and distribution of marijuana in Milburn Township? Please give your reasons. While this issue is not currently right, it's important to be proactive and not reactive. And we on the Township Committee have a large responsibility when we make policy for the town. I cannot opine on how I would vote on this issue without having more facts. However, I will share with my process of how I will opine on it if I'm on the Township Committee when this comes up. I've been watching this issue closely. I'm a lawyer. I've attended seminars with lawyers. I've talked to people who are working in this field. And I've reviewed the current bills which right now are clear as mud. We really don't know. There's more we don't know. If sale and distribution can be regulated by a municipality, we're going to have to get lawyers who specialize in this to help advise us as township committee members on what to do. Some things we don't know that would influence my opinion. Will we be entitled to any tax revenue? We're presuming these are cash businesses. What are the risks that our police would find in terms of having this in our downtown? What are the robbery concerns? There are some safety concerns. What do we know? <coughs> Most of us are parents, and we're very concerned about our children and believe residents share this concern. The fact that so many residents came to our town committee about having a 7-Eleven that was open 24 hours makes me think that they're not going to want a marijuana dispensary in our town. And it's our job to listen to the residents. However, other factors include maybe we would prohibit it in a school zone or a ground floor retail store, because the current bill does involve smoking lounges allowed in the dispensaries. I've asked at two meetings, trying to be proactive as to what residents think about this, because it is coming. And there are some towns that have proactively prohibited marijuana distribution when it comes. Let's be clear. This question is not about the use. The use will be legal, and we're, this is not about the use in private homes. This is a zoning issue, but it's also a commerce issue. So there's arguments on both sides. 
We have to weigh wanting to have a vibrant business district with reasonable prohibitions we want to place. I don't know if you know that the wine rack on Essex Street was having a big poster that advertised jewels. And right now, if you ask people in the school, jewels in the school are a big deal. So with that being a huge issue among teens, I can only guess what parents would want to do. The most important deadline that I'm aware of is that the township committee should have about 180 days to opt out of having a dispensary in town, or we would be prohibited for five years from opting out. And retail use would be permitted for five years. For that reason, it's very important that when it is legalized, if it is legalized, we know and we are ready to act on it. A factor that would influence my decision would be if we can opt in later. So I'd be more likely to opt out if we can opt in. <coughs> I know that is a balanced answer, but I wanted to explain my thought process when the time and issue is right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tara, it is likely that uh, many people believe that marijuana will be legal in the state of New Jersey. Would you support an ordinance to forbid the sale and distribution of marijuana in Milburn Township? Please give your reasons. There is still a lot of unknown with how and when marijuana will be rolled out. <laughs> I have some concerns about the distribution and sale of cannabis related products in our community. What we need to do at minimum is pass a moratorium on the dispensaries and distribution facilities in our community so we can further study the issue. To this point, we have very little clarity from the state on, on this big issue. For one, the banking system is generally not available to marijuana dispensaries, forcing them to keep large amounts of cash on hand. This creates a potential public safety issue. The second big issue is keeping marijuana and cannabis-related products out of the sight and the hands of our children. At the same time, we need to be careful not to find ourselves in more expensive litigation. <coughs> There's a lot of gray area as to whether it is permissible for a municipality to outright ban a specific use of property. <coughs> so again, we need to study this issue thoroughly, but until we have more clarity from the state, we need to at least have a moratorium on any cannabis-related businesses in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Jody, do you have any comments on Tara's answer? I do. I heard her say that uh, she would like to prevent further litigation because she's not sure what the, the law will be, but I'm also then curious as to how a moratorium is legally, how she thinks a moratorium is, is legally permissible, and how that would work, and how she envisions executing that, that plan. Do you have any response, Tara? I don't have a response. Thank you. All right, we're on to our fourth question, and, and this is directed, sorry, this is directed to uh, Tara. The Downtown Milburn Development Alliance, or DMDA, was created by the Township Committee to concentrate on downtown improvement and to network with other business improvement districts. Do you support the DMDA? What specifically should they accomplish in 2019 that will make a meaningful impact on our township? What should be done specifically to revitalize our downtown area? Accountability is key. The DMDA has been able to run the organization without any real accountability or oversight. The Township Committee needs to take a more active role in ensuring that money is being spent wisely and productively. I'm done, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, uh, Jody. The Downtown Milburn Development Alliance, or DMDA, was created by the Township Committee to concentrate on downtown improvement and to network with other business improvement districts. Do you support the DMDA? What specifically should they accomplish in 2019 that will make a meaningful impact on our township? What should be done specifically to revitalize our downtown area? Yes, I wholeheartedly support the DMDA, our business improvement district, whose mission is to promote and enhance the economic vitality and improve the visual appearance of the business district. The history was basically to combat the malls that were coming to New Jersey and to keep the downtowns thriving. I'm going to give you the top 10 reasons why a business improvement district helps a town. It will serve as an economic development tool for a town, 
It can work to keep the downtown cleaner because we do get a grant for street cleaning. Having the ability to help the town respond faster to changing needs of businesses, for example, zoning ordinances. The bid can help tell us, as township committee members, what we can do to make a town more amenable to new businesses coming in. It will have a body of people that will work to attract people to shop and dine in the district. It will develop the public-private partnership it was always intended to be. Having a bid provides us the ability to be eligible for grants and loans that foster economic development. Having a bid allows for businesses to work together in a cooperative environment and share their ups and downs, share information on marketing, promotion, and technology. Having a bid allows us to have design criteria for the storefronts and signage in our downtown, such as a color scheme, late signs. A bid's only alliance is to the property owners and to business community and to help them survive and thrive in this <coughs> fast-moving retail environment. A bid will provide businesses with someone like an executive director who can help and provide guidance through building, planning, and zoning process. That said, I asked to become the liaison to the DMDA because I learned it needed to be rebuilt. It had gone off course and seemed to have lost its focus. <coughs> I saw a problem with the DMDA and I helped find a solution. I've helped shepherd the DMDA towards its goals in 2018, which are to stabilize, repair, and rebuild. We've had great leadership since the town Uber volunteer and marketing expert David Sorkin has come in as president in June, and we have hired a consultant who works on other nearby business districts such as Livingston and Springfield. Ever since June, we seem to be going in the right direction. Some have called to disband the DMDA, but without it, there's no advocate for our downtown businesses. In 2018, rather than disband, I would like to expand. Maybe expand to Upper Short Hills Avenue, maybe consider them all. We'd like to utilize the expertise of our new, our new board members, including Andrew Morgan of Milburn Deli. We'd like to get an executive director to bring new business through the approval process. We'd like to discuss the color palette, look at other thriving towns, Princeton, Westfield, Red Bank, and Montclair. Maybe consider late Thursday night shoppings, pop-up shops. Most significantly, we have to look at some of the stores that have come to town since Complete Streets and since there's been Amazon taking over a lot of our downtowns. I took the time to reach out to the founder of Blue Mercury. His name is Barry Beck, and I spoke to him last night. In response to the comments that nobody comes to Melbourne anymore, anymore, he told me that Blue Mercury came here, and one of the factors was that we have a great downtown and a highly educated and affluent community. They have 18 stores in New Jersey, and they're very happy with how the store has been received. Prior to selecting Milburn, they spent at least two days here immersed in our town, and they said how much they love how it looks. I actually discussed him about other businesses that surround Blue Mercury and other areas so that we can encourage some of their neighbors in other towns to come to Milburn. Thank you. Thank you. Tara, do you have any comments on Jody's answer? Thank you. 
and um, we'll see what happens. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now it is the fun part for you folks because you get to participate and you are the reason why we hope that our, uh, among others, that our forum will be a success. So what we're going to do now, as I explained earlier, is we're going to take a five minute break and we have cards that are going to be given out, Sandy Kibble in the back, I have some up front, and we also have pencils. And uh, once again, we're going to ask you to put your name, address, and your question legibly in so that uh, I can read it. So we begin with our first uh, uh, first question. And this is directed to both Jody and Tara. So I'll begin with Jody since your name is on top. Can you please address your ideas about flooding prevention and remediation? Flood remediation is high on my priority list. The Township Committee recently had a presentation uh, by our consultants, Hatchmont McDonald, because we need to do severe infrastructure changes by the Haram Circle in South Mountain. What's going on right now is that we need to build an emergency gener uh, substation as well as a backup generator. In order to apply to the DEP to get this, we need access to the property. The property owners who live on Moran Circle have not consented to give the township an easement so that it could build these important uh, infrastructure changes. So we've been trying, and because we are unable now to work something out with the neighbor, we actually are going to pass a resolution to take the property by, uh, to, to get an easement so that we can actually do this. So that we can actually apply to the DEP to get to read it. This is very important. This is something that the township needs to move forward also because of the reservoir in South Mountain, uh, the South Mountain Reservoir, a lot of the water flows downhill from all that building. So it's even more important right now that we can deal with flood remediation. The mayor, the Roy River Mayor's Commission is a bunch of different towns and the mayor's been working together advocating for each other, helping each town. And we continue to participate in, in, in flood remediation options. But our first step, which we were advised by our consultants, is to build this infrastructure on Haram Circle. So I'm hoping that if we can't get the cooperation of the neighbors, that we will be able to get access to this property and be able to get a permit from the DEP to do this right away, because we're all scared of the next storm. Thank you. Tara, what are your ideas about flooding prevention and remediation. So I know that flooding is a huge concern and it's a huge issue for the downtown and other, for the South Mountain section of the town. And I know that they had been working with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers for a long time and they thought that they were gonna get help with building a dam at the, um, the reservoir and that didn't, that just fell through. So we need to stay on top of it we need to work with the mayor's council. We need to work with the Broadway River Project. There's a coalition that we should be in touch with. Uh, I hope that we do, um, you know, that the easement that that of the land and that we can build what needs to be built there. And it just we need to stay on top of it. We need to continue having the conversation and just make sure that we address the flooding issues because they're real and a storm will come and we need to be prepared. So, do you have any comment on Tara's answer? I do. So you said we should have conversations to help with flooding. So if in the example I gave on Haran Circle, the neighbors are not willing to cooperate, what fresh ideas do you have for getting them to cooperate? And what do you consider the town's, uh, township committee's role in that? I would talk to our township committee lawyer and see what the possibilities are. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't really know the law in terms of how we would go about doing that, but I know that I can bring together the residents of South Mountain, and I can bring together our community, and we can talk about it with our town lawyer to see what is possible. Karen, do you have any comment on Jody's answer to the question? I don't. Okay, thank you. Go on to the next question then. Regarding budgeting, how do you plan to govern in a manner that will prevent property taxes from further increasing while moving the downtown scape forward, correcting defects, and continuing to provide services. 
Further, are you, further, you are both business owners, and in the last five years, have you stuck to your budget, increased revenues, overdrawn accounts? I'll ask that question to uh, Tara. So there was a lot in there. Do, uh, do you want to, can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, regarding budget, how do you plan to govern in a manner that will prevent property taxes from further increasing while moving the downtown scape forward? correcting defects, and continuing to provide services. Further, you are both business owners. In the last five years, have you stuck to your budget, increased revenues, over joint accounts? Is this a personal question about my budgeting? I think the gist business? of the question is, What's the gist? To, to, this person I think is interested in what management skills you may or may not have in their that's my sense. Well, I think clearly I have better management skills than what's been done. We have over budget on the project of complete streets. Phase one got done basically using all of the money. So I plan to work with the rest of the township committee to staying on our budget, to working with the budget, to figuring out how to have more rateables in downtown and throughout the town, well not the whole town, but the appropriate places in the town to um, increase our tax base. Thank you. Right, do you need me to uh, repeat the question? I don't. Okay, thank you. Please answer. So, for example, if we're going to make some changes in our downtown, we want to, and we don't want to increase taxes for the people who pay taxes in our town, we have to do it in a fiscally responsible manner. So, for example, the flexible parking to remove 23 spots, <coughs> even though they're not favored, would be $486,000. That's $21,000 a spot. There's a couple of people on the township committee that will only would, would like to do that, and I believe my opponent would be happy to spend your money doing that. I don't support that for 23 spots because I want to get the best value with your money. There actually were less expensive options to pick something like flexible parking that were presented to the entire township committee, such as relocating the bollards to widen the parking lane, reconstructing the curb to widening the parking lane, add bollard sleeves or wrap the bollards, or even remove the, <laughs> remove the parking spots. These were rejected by people in the township committee because it was either just remove and spend or nothing. So in terms of keeping your taxes low, I would spend money where it's important and we're gonna get the best bang for your dollar. In terms of my business, no, I have not. I have kept in budget. Um, it's a little different as a lawyer in that my income on a cash basis in my income that I spend. I have expenses to run my firm, but I my I don't have a budget. It's my my income is based on my legal fee revenue. So uh, I've steadily increased my revenue as I've increased my business throughout the years in town. Tara, do you have any comment on Joey's answer? Did you, wait, Jody, did you vote to? This is really meant to be a comment. Rather oh, this is just a comment. Yes. Okay, then no, no comment. All right, the next question is directed to Tara. You said this election is more than one issue. Besides complete streets, what other issues are in your mind? All right, so in case you didn't, um, In my closing, I mean, my opening statement. So I want to talk about the high property taxes, the flooding, which it just addressed in the question, affordable housing, which we are going to need to figure out how to comply. And basically, I've been going to the township committee meetings for about two years now. And I don't think that the township committee is listening to the residents. I've watched the residents get up and try to speak. I've seen a lot of eye rolling. I have seen a lot of hand, no, just plain out no when residents have asked to be involved. I've seen projects and things happen without <coughs> residents being listened to. So basically, 
Complete streets is indicative of the issues in our downtown. Planning, poor planning, poor budgeting, and poor customer service. And we just <coughs> seen in Complete Streets, but we saw it in the Chatham Road development, and we saw it in the beginnings of the 24-hour 7-Eleven zoning. And so I want to make this town more friendly. I want to make it more friendly to the residents. I want to make it more friendly to the business owners. I want to make it more friendly to the people who come into town, the visitors from other towns. So transparency, community involvement. We've been asking the mayor to have an ad hoc committee for a very long time. That has not happened. I think that there are a lot of really smart people sitting in this room who want to be involved in the process of our government, and they're being denied. They're being left out. And I think it's time for that to change. So that is my biggest issue. Thank you. Uh, Jody, would you like to answer that question? I could repeat the question. Did you want me to comment on hers? Well, you could comment on hers, or you could answer the, the question is really asking uh, what, are the, what other issues are there been, uh, other than complete streets are those addressed to Tara. But you really have a chance now, I suppose, to comment on her answer. Sure. Or address other issues, which everyone can do. I think the question. 90 seconds. I think the question was telling because the question to Tara was, is there any other issue than complete streets? And she went right back to complete streets. And I still think it's somewhat short-sighted to the residents that have other concerns, such as flood mitigation, finding more playing fields for their children, maintaining exceptional services like trash pickup, street cleaning, historic preservation, things like that. It all comes back to complete streets. What I also hear is just <clears throat> problems. I don't hear any practical solutions at all. All I just hear is problems and, and blame and negativity. I just don't hear an actual issue <coughs> and a solution. I talked about flood mitigation, I gave you a solution. We want to talk about playing fields. We're trying to negotiate with East Orange to rent their fields uh, by Parson Hill Road. We've even talked to Benet Jeshurun about using their parking lot as a field. Spot an issue, find a solution. Being just negative and pointing out issues, is, we all could do that. Thanks. I feel that this is pretty much, I am being, words are being put into my mouth as a resident, as a business owner. This is what I experience when I want to come and talk at the Township Committee or how I'm being interpreted. So again, I talk about complete streets because that is the biggest issue of our town right now. There are other issues. But again, I use it as an example of a larger systemic problem of our township committee. Our town has been run in the same way for 30 years, and it's time for change. And if you come to the township committee, and I invite you all to come or to watch it, you'll see that it's not just me getting up there, and it's not just a few. There are people that come all the time, and yes, there are issues, but unless we talk about the issues, we are not going to find solutions. So we can pretend that everything's okay, and we can pretend that there's nothing to talk about, and we can all be super happy and super positive, or we can talk about what's really going on and find solutions. And I know that is what I know about my business, and my business has survived the past two years because I'm solution-orientated, I listen to my customers, I involve people, I ask for help when help is needed, I don't have all the answers, I'm not pretending, I'm not a lawyer, right? Uh, you know what? I don't even own a home here. I'm a renter. I'm a renter. Oh my God, I'm a renter. But you know what? I pay taxes on my business. I pay taxes through my rent. I love this town. I am so invested. Everything I have is here. And I care about it. And more importantly, I care about how people are treated. I pay Thank care. You. Oh, we're done? <laughs> Stop, sorry. The boss says you wanted this. me to talk. I am talking. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, we've really gone back and forth, but I'm sure you'll have an opportunity sure. to express your thoughts about that. So this next question may be a good sequel to this. Uh, this question is, uh, 
as a neighbor involved in the proposed development on Chatham Road. I have been concerned by the lack of transparency, communication, and township at township committee meetings. When we, when we the public, ask for information or updates, please address your feelings about the relationship between the town uh, between township committee communication members and their constituents who attend these meetings. I'm going to ask uh, Jody to respond. Thank you. That's a good question. And I've had this specific conversation with members of the community that live near Chatham Road. The hard part about this is that when you're in litigation, the township lawyers have not let us, it's been our township policy not to <coughs> communicate about a matter that's in litigation. So it's hard to be as transparent as we would like to be because we have an attorney client privilege. And for the main reason is that we don't want to affect our negotiating strategy in any way when we are right now working with a developer who takes a lot of liberties and wants to build a very large and dense project right next to our arboretum. So even when we've had township meetings, we've seen members of the developer at the township meeting. So we try to share and we want to share with the residents as much as we possibly can. Um, I do think that we tell them as much as possible. I will say that <coughs> I personally would encourage more discourse during, I don't run the meetings, the mayor runs the meeting. I personally would encourage more discourse. If not during the meeting, I'd be happy to hold a separate meeting with the residents of Chatham Road area so that they can tell me their feelings. But I am aware that when we are negotiating on their behalf, that we have their best interest in mind. Thank you. Uh, Tara, would you like to comment on that or answer the question? No, I'm done. All right, then we'll go to our <coughs> next question. I'm going to address this to you, Tara. What is, what, what is your thought about allowing residents to make a charitable contribution to a township fund in place of paying real estate? Right. I think that I think that that's not legal. I think that they tried to do that in the beginning of the year, and there was some talk about it. And it's not legal. Okay, so that would be your answer. Jody. That's a good question. And last year, even though there were a lot of residents who probably might not have benefited financially from running to our town hall and giving us payments on their taxes by the end of the year, people still did in the hopes that at some point. Uh, they would receive a deduction. There have been creative pro uh, processes suggested as a charitable deduction. As creative as it is, mm -hmm. as of now, that does not seem to be a possibility. But should there be any sort of loophole that way to work around this uh, uh, restriction on, on state and local taxes, which is very important to our homeowners who mostly do have homes in excess of a million dollars, a lot do have homes in excess of a million dollars that would benefit and are, are still being hurt by this. I would be in favor, if there was something legal, I would explore all options. Thank you. Do you have any comment, Tara? I don't. Okay. This question is addressed to Jody. Why are parking regulations changed without any input <coughs> from those businesses and organizations that are adversely affected? I am not on the parking committee, but what happens when we change a regulation, for example, if we were to change parking on a street, I noticed that we just changed the street, the parking in front of the community garden. And I believe that was because people were parking all day, maybe for the high school. I'm not exactly sure, but what happens when we get a parking change is we usually get a recommendation from the chief of police who will go to the parking committee or go to our business administrator and then it comes to the township committee, either in the form of a resolution or an, or an ordinance. If it is going to be enacted, there's public hearing. So the public who read our agendas can see what streets will be affected and they can weigh in because we cannot enact an ordinance without public hearing. Thank you. Tara, would you like to comment on that question? I would not. And we'll go to the next one. <laughs> uh, this is not, uh, I'm going to ask um, uh, Tara you to answer uh, this first. Sure. 
How would you address the preservation of our historic assets as some are in danger of being destroyed? So our historic assets in meaning the reservation? The, what? I think the person has in mind historic buildings, mm -hmm. historic preservation district, the Greenwood programs Gardens. of... Pardon me? Greenwood Gardens? Well, it's not my question, okay. but I, I think I think we're talking about some of the historic buildings and areas um, that make our town what it's been in overall these years. I think that's the gist of the question. Right. So I get. I think that the gist is how, how are we going to keep the character of Millburn Township? Right. I think that's an important issue that we're all concerned about because we are facing many changes and things that are going to have to happen, and we want to make sure that Melbourne Township stays the town that we all decided to move here for. And I'm, you know, I don't specifically know what that person is asking, but I can tell you that I love this town, and I chose this town for so many reasons, particularly the walking downtown. That's why I wanted to have my business here. I wanted to be able to walk to work. I wanted my daughter to be able to walk to the incredible schools that we have. I wanted to be able to have access to the reservation and the park and the paper mill and all the beautiful, amazing, quaint, charming aspects of our town. So I'm going to do whatever I can do to preserve all of that while meeting the requirements that um, we are going to have to meet in terms of development and affordable housing as we move forward. Jody, would you like to answer this question? Yes, I think it had to do with the ordinance uh, that requires, uh, that is, Historic Re uh, Preservation Committee. We are one of the premier communities in historic preservation in the state of New Jersey. So we actually have a specific ordinance, and there are two historic areas which can be seen on our master plan, the Wyoming and the Short Hills Park area. So we recently have streamlined our process because, for example, if you have a home that has a slate roof and you <coughs> want to replace that and you're in the historic district, you can't just put it on an asphalt roof because it's cheaper or because you want to do that. So we've streamlined that process and we've tried to make our ordinance more specific so that if somebody does live in the historic district or if they are moving to the historic district, they know what they can do. Uh, our Historic Preservation Committee has actually we, uh, purchased the Parcel House, which is by Giro Park, and they're working on that as well, which is keeping a lot of Milburn's history. And it's a very interesting place where they have all kinds of maps and pictures and everything like that. So we're very proud in Milburn of our historic preservation efforts, and we are, excuse me? I said yes. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> I have the floor. Okay. So anyway, I voted on ordinance to, to streamline the historic preservation process, and I think it's it's been very effective. Thank you. Do you have a comment that, that you'd like to make, Tara, to that answer? Nope. Okay. The next question, uh, I'm going to, um, it's a tough choice, but I'm, I'm going to uh, ask the, the question to you, Tara, if maybe something you'd want to address first. The question is, Complete Streets is in the middle of its phases. Aside from pausing, what specific ideas would you implement immediately to help the town? We need to get a committee together of stakeholders. There are many people that want to be involved in this process. So we need to get a committee together, an ad hoc, and we need to figure out how to move forward as a community so that we don't end up in this same exact place in a year. I feel like this town has been completely divided over this issue. We see it everywhere. And moving forward, we need to make sure that every voice is heard and that everybody feels that they have been part of this process so that we don't end up, again, in a divided town. Because I, for one, am completely, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the division. It's gotten really ugly out there. And uh, in, in meaning out there, meaning in our community, and it needs to come to an end. And I think people are angry because they're not part of the process and because they're not being heard. So that is what needs to happen right away. That's what we've been asking to happen for over a year now. Thank you. Jody, would you like to answer that question? Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. Complete Streets is in the middle of its phases. Aside from pausing, 
What specific ideas would you implement immediately to help the town? I would immediately go forward with meeting with not only stakeholders, but property owners and developers who do know more about real estate and what this town should look like. So we can figure out, in conjunction with our master plan, how we want our streetscape to continue to look. If they don't like the plan that we proposed for phase two and phase three, let's figure out how to change it. But rather than pause or even go back for a word, as my opponent seems to want to do, I'd like to move forward. Excuse me. I'd like to move forward and make sure that our commuters who are come to the Milburn train station have adequate pedestrian safety, have adequate uh, safeguards in place. Upper Milburn Avenue, where Goldberg's is and Milburn Deli, was supposed to be part of, part of phase two. At this moment, we were supposed to fix their sidewalks, and that was part of the beautification process. There are merchants who are in limbo and in fear of getting fines for not fixing their property because they don't know if we're going forward or not. So we really have to break the impasse and move forward. So I would find a way to move forward. Would I include an ad hoc committee? I would. But I hope it wouldn't be similar to when we had a township committee person who on the ad hoc committee sometimes uh, had misrepresented or inflated what had occurred when she gave reports to our committee. We had a letter written by members of the ad hoc committee who were volunteers who were very dismayed that their work on the ad hoc committee found just that they were disparaged, they were offered unsolicited opinions. So I would hope that if there was an ad hoc committee, there would be more controls over it so that there's actually productive. And for that reason, I have suggested getting a community mediator to help with that. And yes, it would cost a little bit of money, but it would keep everyone on task. And thank you. Tara, would you like to comment on that answer? I would. Jody, you've had two years to move this town forward and to move this town forward on this specific issue. Nothing has happened. And I think that it's time now to have a different approach. And I think that it's time to have new voices. And I think that it is time for change. And I think that is going to move Wilmer forward. Having the same of what we've had for the past two years is I, I don't see how anything, how you're going to now propose change and now propose moving the town forward. So, jo uh, Jody, would you like to respond to that? Sure. Um, we just finished recently negotiations with our builder from phase one. So it's only now that we're in a position to move forward because we were in negotiations and mediation with our, con our contractor. So there's been no delay except that we have an impasse among the five of us in the township committee. And so hopefully, at some point, we will either go forward and continue the project, or we will decide whether to make any changes. But it's only recently that we voted on flex parking and other issues and other changes that were proposed. So I, I don't see any delay, but I also don't hear any fresh issues, any fresh ideas about, about what should be done, other than new voices. The next question is for you to, uh, uh, is for, actually it's directed to Jody. <clears throat> you say it's time to compromise and move forward, yet the mayor and you refuse to appoint an ad hoc committee. Why? What can end the stalemate? That's a good question. I'm the deputy mayor, but I do not have the authority to appoint an ad hoc committee. I do differ with the mayor on that because I would appoint an ad hoc committee. I actually spoke to a few developers this week to populate an ad hoc committee and gave the mayor a list yesterday and basically told her that she needs to speak to these people because there, there are people, there are voices. Um, I do differ from the mayor in that the mayor has suggested that an ad hoc committee would have people who only want to go backwards. Even if that's the case, I still think we need all diverse opinions of the people who've offered their suggestions because we, do, we, we don't want... We don't want a committee of people who say yes, or a committee that say no. We do. We need, we do need a diverse group. But I haven't had any rejection to an ad hoc committee. I actually think it would be very helpful, because a committee is going to recommend to us what to do. So 
if it is a cohesive community or if it's a diverse community of developers and stakeholders, I'm happy to move forward. I, I've never refused, I've never had the authority <laughs> to even offer it. Thank you. Carrie, do you want to comment on that answer? I've also never seen you once bring that up at the township committee meetings and say that you're in favor and even ask Cheryl. Even when Jackie and Diane have continually brought that up, you never once said that that was a good idea. But we are upon an election. So it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. Do you have a response, Joey? Yeah. Speaking of elections, the next question is to both candidates. So I'm going to ask um, uh, Tara for you to answer first. To both candidates. Would you like to comment on whom you support in the race for U.S. Congress for NJ7 and what impact the race has on Milburn Shorten? Would you like to comment on that? And if so, please. I'm really happy to have Tom Malinowski's endorsement for... Uh, I'm happy that I have his endorsement and I'm very, very, very supportive of Tom. Would you like to respond to that question? Sure. I'm not going to comment on that because this is a local election. And this is about what is best for Milburn. So what I do in the polls is my private business. I would hope that the people in Milburn are smart, independent thinkers like I am. I've always operated in a bipartisan manner. I'm the one Republican on a committee of four Democrats, yet I've seen no problems cooperating with everybody because I can work with anybody that is work, will, willing to work with me and smart. I really think that partisanship has no, no, it's just inappropriate in a downtown, but right now in a local election. But right now we're still partisan and that's still how we operate. So that's what, we're, what we work under. But my election preferences are inappropriate at this point to share. Time. I'm going to move on to the next question. And this is for both candidates, and I'm going to ask um, Jody to respond first. Given your participation with the DMDA, what did you discover about the DMDA when first joining the organization? Both candidates mentioned dysfunction prior to June 2018. Can they describe uh, and what action was taken? Yes, can they describe it and what action was taken and by whom to address the dysfunction? Sure. Interestingly, I heard a lot about the dysfunction from the from the DNDA from my opponent. My opponent was very passionate about the leadership of the DMDA and her mission to remove the people in charge of the DMDA. In fact, my opponent um, stormed the DMDA offices uninvited and demanded to see the contract of the of the executive director of the DMDA and rifled through the drawers, resulting in a trespass report. My opponent also held up scissors at somebody that worked at the DMDA and said that she effing sucked at her job. So I heard Whoa. about a lot of the Whoa. So I've heard about a lot of the dysfunction of the DMDA both from my opponent and in reading incident reports about my opponent. But you know what? I'm glad that I know about this because it helped me realize that the DMDA and we learned that they were not following their mission because they were struggling with some legal issues with their executive director's contract. So when I came in as the liaison, we helped uh, button up their contract. We, she left. We had, a, we had some volunteers step in. Unfortunately, there was a lot of apathy among merchants who were involved in the DMDA. And getting new people to serve, we're on like our third president this year. But once I heard about it, I've been very involved in helping them with their bylaws, in helping them with their budgeting, and helping make sure they have an executive director and that they do follow their mission. Tara, would you like to respond? Thank you. <laughs> wow. It's just going to take me a minute to get over that one. It, it's, uh, it's, wow. 
I guess anybody in this day and age can say whatever they want to say, and we have to learn that. So I actually am just going to, I'm going to breathe it out, and um, I'm, I'm done. I'm not even going to respond to that. But I am happy to talk to anybody about my experience at the DMDA and what happened in another moment. Thank you. Thank you. That completes the time we have for questions for those whose questions weren't answered. Some of them were the same, and that was part of the reason for the choice, but the choices were random. Uh, now, the last part of our program is uh, the candidate's closing remarks, and each candidate will be allowed up to five minutes for closing remarks, rebuttal, summation, however you want to use that time. Since we started uh, with uh, Tara as the opening, we're going to have the first closing remarks by Jody Rosenberg. Thank you to the Short Hills Association and all the, those who volunteered to make this evening possible. You've heard our thoughts on very important issues. I want you to think about some things. Do you want somebody on the Township Committee who has experience? Do you want somebody on the Township Committee who is solution-oriented? Or do you want somebody on the Township Committee who just points out problems? Do you want somebody on the Township Committee who has never held office? to make important decisions that are going to affect you and your wallet. I treat people with respect. I put the town first. I don't take credit for things I don't do. I'm an effective communicator. I have a very strong work ethic, a fresh, energetic perspective, and I can be counted on. I have a reputation for getting things done. When you ask me to do something, it's done. Common sense. Respectful, conscientious, accessible, responsive, positive, balanced, and capable. These describe why I'm the best candidate for the Milburn Township Committee, and I've been doing it for three years with pleasure and honor. And I'm seeking re-election to continue to be a steward of your community. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Tara? Thank you so much for coming. I am running for Township Committee to move Milburn forward toward a vibrant, diverse, and responsive community. <coughs> we already have three lawyers on the Township Committee, but we don't have any business owners who understand working within a budget and good customer service. So please remember my priorities are good planning, good budgeting, and good customer service. In her published candidate statement, my opponent who claims to be the positive candidate has claimed that because I rent a home in town, that I have no vested interest in the effect township spending has on our taxes. Of course, seeking to divide Milburn into renters and owners is not positive. But more than that, it is false. As all Milburn landlords pay property taxes, I pay taxes through my rent. As do all renters, 20% of Milburn housing units are rentals. I've also invested my life savings in my business in town, just as many as you have in your homes. Sadly, Jody has it exactly reversed. By voting again and again to push through complete streets with poor planning, poor budgeting, and poor management, my opponent has shown little regard for the effect that the multi-million dollar project, <coughs> expensive litigation, and other out-of-control spending has had on our taxes. In the same statement, my opponent falsely accused me of being self-serving because I am a Milburn Avenue merchant. It is quite the opposite. As a merchant, I know about serving customers. For the Township Committee, the customers are you, the residents, and the taxpayers of Milburn. My opponent also says that I am a one-issue candidate. On that point, I must concede that she is correct. My one issue is Milburn. Milburn is a special town. It has so many tremendous assets, as I said before. The people who live and work here, the schools, the location, the parks, the reservation, the paper mill, the list goes on and on. It's a premier town and it should be run that way. Milburn deserves better. The residents, all of you, deserve better. I'm running for township committee to move Milburn forward and I ask for your support to do so.